Welcome to the brand spanking new Audi S4. And on my left, Mr. Joe Achilles. How's it going, mate? Good, mate, good. I still can't believe that this car is a diesel. What? You are joking, right? Where are you going, mate? Flipping hell, he's right. That was my first reaction as well. But one of the things I want to share with you about the new S4 is forget the fact that it's a diesel right now. We're going to jump back in the car. Me and Joe are going to tell you why this car actually is a lot more special than you think. Yeah? Before we get into how this car drives, let's touch on something never seen before in the Audi S4. A diesel hybrid system that couples performance and economy into one package. So what is this new mild hybrid system and why is it important? Let's face it, air quality and pollution seem to be on everyone's mind nowadays. For the tree huggers, it's all they talk about, whilst for the petrolhead, it seems like the antichrist. But to find a middle ground, I think there's value in discussing it. So here goes. With a traditional hybrid system, it could pretty much power the entire car. Whereas with this new mild hybrid system, it's only able to assist with the engine and not be used independently. So really, the benefits of the mild hybrid system are improved emissions, improved MPG, and reduced turbo lag. Okay, that's enough. Here's some engine noise. So what we have here is a three liter V6 single turbo diesel with hybrid technology. Still produces around 350 horsepower, just under. Yep. The old model was what, around 500 newton meters of torque? Yeah. But this is 700. That's the key, isn't it? 700 newton meters of torque. Now, the petrol heads watching this will be like, I don't care, it's not petrol. But I think you need to think where Audi are kind of going with this now. So I think there was always a question around whether some of the S models were almost a bit too close and too similar to the RS models, right? Yep. And what Audi have kind of positioned with this, the new S4, is they're trying to deliver a car that can do everything very well, but also I think there's a lot of focus on emissions and fuel economy. Yeah. So what's kind of new with this car, first of all? In fact, first of all, I haven't really introduced Joe. I've just scared the hell out of him. So, well, well, <laughs> I'm well, used to that on your yeah. channel. <laughs> Welcome, first of all, buddy, to the channel. Thanks, mate. Again. Thanks. How's it going, guys? Yeah, if you don't follow Joe, guys, make sure to do links in the description. Um, I guess there's a question. What does it feel like? Because it is a diesel. Everyone's going to be apprehensive. Well, let's find out. So it's very punchy. It is. I'm going to give it that. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, um, because I like being honest. I'm a little bit, just as you take your glasses off, look at mine on, <laughs> we're in sync. I'm gonna be honest, I think the initial pull away, um, you can tell it's got this kind of very mild hybrid -y system, but I, I thought you'd get a little bit more from it personally. Where I really notice this thing is mid-range torque. Yep. I mean, right now we're doing 30 miles an hour, we've got a 50 mile an hour speed limit. If I just punch it, bags of torque. Yep. And that's what this is. Point to point, this car will be really, really good. Yeah. Because what's the economy on this? 40 miles to the gallon. Yeah, just over, I think. Which is the new WLTP 40, so it's actually a realistic 40. Yeah. It's not like in the old days, that would probably be close to the quoted 50. Yeah. Which people must not confuse, right? Like, because you look at figures and you're like, the car's getting worse, but no, they're not. Just the figure that you see now is actually a realistic figure. Yeah. And I think that in itself, I think in this day and age, um, I think fuel economy is something very real. We're, we're moving into a world where you know the electric industry is really starting to kick in, and anything that the, the kind of combustion engine or just the engine in general can do to claw its way back ever so slightly from an efficiency and an emissions perspective is definitely a win. And when you couple that kind of MPG efficiency reduction in CO2 to the zero to six time of 4.8, yep. it's very reasonable. It's very, I mean, it's what a tenth or something slower than the old petrol model, yeah. but it's, 20% more efficient um, and yeah I mean it is it, and I think as you say it, it bridges that gap between the RS4 and the S4 now um, and it kind of fills a completely different market space yeah. um, in the sense of all brands so I think it's, it's yeah it's a very appealing yeah. appealing car model now it's funny because in most of my videos I always start with like yeah petrol petrol you know zero to 60 and actually in this video, I've pretty much kind of started with the reason as to why this car is so good from an efficiency and a carbon footprint. Yep. 
which in itself kind of tells you where Audi are going, but also I think it's about time we satisfy, I guess, the petrol heads watching this, because there is, an, a, there is definitely a question there to think, why would I sell my petrol S4 for yep. the new diesel S4? Yeah. And I guess th there is a question mark, because if you are a diehard petrol head, then you, know, you just probably love the smell of petrol in the first place. You like the more free revving engine, but you get everything from that car in this. The compromise is probably the sound and the lower revs, really, isn't it? Yeah. And bearing in fact in mind that this torque is, you know, mid-range torque is brilliant, and that's kind of where you're going to be spending most of your time when you're driving this car. I mean, I'm cruising now, mid-range, bags of power. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? It is. And 700 newton meters equates to around 550 foot-pound of torque. So Joe and I have gathered that the car is fun to drive and has lots of mid-range torque. But what do you get from the S4 if you wanted to go out and buy it? But what's more important, what do you get as standard? Well, you'll get the 19-inch five-spoke wheels, you'll get the Audi phone box with wireless charging, the virtual cockpit is a standard option, you get the aluminium effect mirror surrounds, the Nappa leather with the Super Sport seats also come with the massage function as standard, you get the flat bottom steering wheel, the 10.1 MMI plus nav, rear camera, privacy glass, and all the S-line trimmings including brakes, suspension, and black grills. If you wanted to spec in some of the options packed, you can opt for things such as the comfort and sound pack, which is £1,400 and gives you ambient lighting, Bang & Olsen sound system, keyless entry and the 360 camera. If you wanted to go for the driver assistance pack, which will cost you £1,250, it includes adaptive cruise control, the Audi pre-sense emergency braking, the turn assist and lane assist. The brakes on this car are decent. I mean, as you saw at the start of the video, <laughs> brakes are good. They're really, really good. Yeah. Now, in this model, you have an eight-speed Tiptronic gearbox. It's not S-tronic, is it? Because you've got the T-bar on this. Yes. Um, and, they have, and I did have to do a bit of search, I thought it would be an S-tronic, but no, it's a Tiptronic gearbox. I mean, how do you find the seats? Because these are stunning. Yeah, I mean, the problem with me, Steph, is um, for those of you that don't know, I'm like six foot four, and I unfortunately don't fit properly in Audi seats. Um, <laughs> I think they are designed for anyone of six foot and under. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, like Steph's shoulders fit lovely in the support yeah. and his head's on the headrest, but I sit well above the seat and my shoulders are well out of the... Um, <laughs> so although I appreciate how beautiful they are and how they must fit the average person for a giant like myself, unfortunately, they just don't, don't fit properly. Yeah. Um, but the interior, you know, as a whole, it's just typically Audi. It's really beautiful in here. It's, it's, it's a lot of, you know, nice things. There's a couple of nastier plastics like you touched upon, but yeah. they're mostly hidden away. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah, there's a nice kind of, on this one, there's a nice contrast between carbon fiber and Alcantara parts as well, which yes. I think are really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think, look, without without kind of going into all the fancy fandangas about how great Audi are, because that's, we all know every, I mean, I'm sure Joe's done it in his videos, I've done it in mine, all the Audis, that we, all, the, all modern Audis feel very premium. There's a couple of things which probably could be improved, but you have to find the balance between, I guess, cost and affordability. It does look really, Really, really cool. I think from a driver's perspective, I, I think like with the electric car market, I mean that's, that is quick. <laughs> it's relentless. It is it? relentless. It's, it's yeah. Just relentless, yeah. I think like with the electric car market, everyone was very much against it to start with, but I don't know about you, I've started to buy into certain electric cars. I think actually, do you know what? There is definitely value and requirement and need for it. Um, the same thing I think with diesel. I think what Audi are going for in the future, as we touched on the start, is a very clear differential between RS and S. Uh, I mean, we're seeing this engine in, you had the, was it the uh, S6? The S6 recently, yeah, the new S6, yeah. same, same engine. It's in the SQ5 as well? Yep, exactly, yep. Um, and I would envisage to see this start going across majority models, and then as you kind of progress you know, over the years, you'll have the RS models, which are also going to start coming with this kind of mild electric uh, hybrid, hybrid system. system. Yeah. So I think there's a real clear steer that Audi, that their kind of strategic goal moving forward is provide an everyday car that does everything whilst being efficient and good for the environment. Yep, yep. Any final thoughts on this thing, mate? Um, well, I have to say, uh, I'm I'm really impressed with. We, we've not, we don't. On these press drives, we don't get the car for long. Yeah. It's all quite rushed, so it's a very first opinion from both of us. Yeah. But 
I have to say, sitting here as a passenger at least, yeah. it feels very stable through corners like yeah. this. It feels very, very impressive actually. Um, as Steph talked about, the braking ability is really good. The speed, it's a very different sensation. If you jumped in the old S4, you'd probably feel like you're going faster, but in yeah. fact, they're almost identical in terms of pace. Yeah. Um, and that's just the way the torque delivers it as opposed to the outright power. Yeah. Um, the sound's not offensive. Um, it's not as impressive as the S6 for some reason. The S6 sounds a lot more like an old V8, yeah. um, but a lot of that's probably synthesized. So yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm really impressed and looking in the back, where we're both sitting, I, you know, I could definitely jump in there and there'd be, there'd be enough leg, leg room and stuff. So I think, yeah, as a load lugger in the event, I'd always go for the estate myself. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this car. Yeah. Um, I am, yeah, no, it's, it's not too bad at all, mate. Thanks, mate, no, good, good little summary. So I think, I guess to, to kind of wrap it off, uh, wrap, wrap it off, to wrap it all up. Wrap it, wrap, wrap it off, you don't know. <laughs> to wrap this car up, um, you know, like I said, it, it, do, it does everything well. I, for me, I don't think there's anything out there that really wows me. Um, I think everything is good in this car. Um, but then I would also probably say that I had the S5, and you know that was a three-liter V6 turbo petrol engine as well. Yeah. Uh, and it was a similar story. I was always wanting the RS. I was always wanting that that bit more. And I think the same thing is said if you're a die-hard petrol head and you got you got into one of these, you'll always be like, great, I can't wait for the new RS4. Yeah. You know? But for the majority of people who want to find that balance of economy and everything and put it all into one package, this is a great car. Uh, and I've got no doubt that this will do well. There is a reason why the A4 is Audi's fourth best-selling car in the UK. There's a reason why um, the demand for this car is so high. Look at this little cheeky chicane kicking back in there. <laughs> in fact, I was going to wrap it up now, but we've just found some some pretty sick roads. It's always the way, isn't it, with these videos? You're like, right at the end, it's like, oh, where's this road going? Yeah, yeah it's compl it is compliant, look. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's brilliant actually. There you go, it's got a couple more brownie points just for those last corners. <laughs> but as we've said, so in the UK slash European market, the petrol S4 is no more. That's it. You are now getting this uh, V6 turbo diesel as the only option available. You can, however, still get a petrol version new 2019 Audi S4, but you need to leave Europe or go to America, yep. or go anywhere else. So, I guess the final verdict is, if you really can't deal with them not having the petrol, leave the country and buy, <laughs> one, and buy one there. I think that's the best way to say it, but if you can deal with having a diesel, uh, it's not like the older diesel which sounded horrendous. They don't. They still don't sound amazing, but they don't sound bad anymore no, either. No. And with a lot of the kind of synthesized noise inside, it does give you more of that kind of petrol-y feel. Make sure to check out Joe's channel if you haven't done already. Make sure to subscribe for me for plenty more content to come in the future. And I'll see you all very soon on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.